Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. I'm Anne Esselstyn. And this video is a little bit different today. And besides being... In fact, this video is probably the most important video any of you will ever see, male or female. And the things well, that identify. Jane is going to Nine talk binary. about are things that I'm honestly saying <clears throat> I didn't realize all of them. There, some of them were quite new when Jane started talking about them. Wait until you hear. Well, this is coming from someone who taught middle school for 350,000 years. And I also, when I'm not doing recipes with my mom or videos and or the little bit of research I've done with the, you know, pediatrics at Cleveland Clinic, um, I'm a middle school sex ed teacher. And that's her passion, actually. I love it. It's it's um, it's a really important place to go talk to kids, like in the light of day, in a classroom with their gray-haired auntie right there talking to them about things. Um, so this is actually how I talk with middle school kids about some of this stuff um, below the belt in the female anatomy. Male anatomy, everyone understands. Like everything's out there. The kids joke about it, like, oh yeah, the twigs and the berries, the bats and the balls, they're all out there. And there's much more knowledge and comfort and jocularity with males and boys around their anatomy and how it works, how it functions, where it is, its potential, what it does for them, what it can do for them, what it will do for them someday. We, females, girls, women, um, or biologically uh, women born that way, our bodies are not always clear what's happening. So I'm gonna talk about stuff below the belt right now and the power of plants. And we actually have a section in our cookbook. Honestly, wherever I can get this topic in, I squeeze it into conversation. And wait until you see the um, photograph that shows what she's no, no, talking about. No, no, it doesn't have a photograph. Well, it no, does. We have, we have no, fruit no. and vegetables. No, I didn't have Google. So, oh, um, sorry. Th we have a section in our book called how plants powerfully support women. And we talk about it, you know, obviously the heart disease and diabetes prevention and da 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 da. But there's a section about stuff, not just, um, you know, we do, oh, here it is, way if you get a picture. Our above the belt with our breasts, how it's so protective of our breast tissue. That's but what also, I was talking about. Well, this is, this is actually where I want to start because Wade, can you zoom in on this? This is sort of our um, vegetable expression of, the female anatomy. And if you look at this, this is actually really confusing. If you've just talked to a, like, a kind of class of middle school kids, if I'm talking to them about male anatomy, they all know exactly what we're talking about, pretty sure where things are. That female anatomy that we just showed you, the kids are, you know, everyone's like, oh yeah, um, where does it live? Like wh where, where is it in my body? So I have found that I need to talk about the female anatomy um, and explain sort of what's going on below the belt, the order of events from front to back, back to front, before we can proceed with the physiology of things. So I'm going to take over and talk about it right now. And, and by the way, because Jane is able to do this, it is so important that the words that she uses, like penis and vagina and vulva, vulva are not strange things because they're they're just part of everyday life yeah if you can ma mention things you can manage things to quote mr rogers okay so i'm gonna start back here where you are on it so anatomy of a female's body so we're gonna talk about a female not like that front view like wade just took a picture up close i think you got a picture of the of the it looks like a like a weightlifting contest like ovaries fallopian tubes uterus and vag vaginal space it looks like a, you know, some sort of insect weightlifting contest test. It's not clear what it is, where it is, or how and it functions. Black choy at the end. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, female anatomy. We're going to talk about a woman cross section, so cut in half and from uh, front to back or back to front. And actually, let's start in the back because that's a little more familiar with all of us. And females, women, have a hole in the back. I talk with middle school kids about this stuff. So we have a hole in the back. And this hole is called the anus, right? Right, anus. Anus. And the anus has all kinds of important functions. If we didn't have an anus, we would die. In front of the anus, there's another hole, and this hole starts with a V. And this hole... I know that one. ...is what? 
vagina. Right. It's the vaginal space. It's the vagina, the vaginal opening, the reproductive space, all that. And then in front of this hole, there's another hole, and this starts with a U. I know that. What's this one called? Urethra. Urethra. Some people say uterus sometimes, but uterus lives above the vagina. Like the baby grows in the, in the womb in the uterus, comes out the vaginal space. Um, the urethra. Around this time, the seventh grade boys are always like, oh my God, she has so many holes. How can she, how, how, how many holes do I have? And I'm like, you guys, you know you have one hole in the end of your penis. Um, but this is just dizzying for some people. Some of my friends don't even know that they have these three holes holes and then I actually say there's more and I like, actually think what? I knew sort of about that well <laughs> after four kids you hope so <laughs> um, and the next thing is a C but this is not a hole this is 8,000 nerves for one thing and one thing only this is the clitoris the clitoris the clit whatever you want to call it in front and that is for sexual pleasure so what's so interesting about this is this is Kuva is not a word. I've, I've tried to look it up. I think in French it may have some meaning, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It's just C-U-V-A. And what I really try to ex get across here is this is the order of events of physiology in a female's body. Because a male has a penis, which does all kinds of stuff for him. Can you list some of the things it does? A penis can... You list them. <laughs> yeah. I can't even think of one thing a penis does. <laughs> Urination. Yeah. You, you you didn't tell me you were going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Penis does urination. Penis does... I'm looking at you. Student. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're the only student in the class right now. <laughs> urination, re reproduction, reproduction, and... Yay! Oh, pleasure. And sexual pleasure, oh, yes. I'm, so I'm the, better than I thought. Yes, A, A plus. So, Penis does urination, reproduction, sexual pleasure. And... So does a female. A female has urination from her urethra, reproduction from her vag vagina, vaginal space, sexual pleasure from the clitoris, clit clitoris, clit, whatever you want to call that. And growing up, so many females think that they have a hole from which they pee, poop, and maybe reproduce someday. And they never even learn that they have pleasure, unless they discover it themselves, which, you know, hooray, they discovered it. Plenty of boys, males, biologically born males, discover that pleasure out of the gate, <laughs> you know? So many kids just sit there when the little kids walk around school and they're, you know, first grade, second grade, just comforted by, just, just it's comfortable holding themselves. You know, females, we just don't even always know that it's there. So when people say to me, Miss Esselstyn, you'd be so proud of us. We talk about penises and vaginas in our home. And I think, oh, you're poor kids. And they say, w why? I said, well, because, you know, penis is the proper term, but the proper term for the female a, a gen genitalia, the female anatomy down below the belt, is vulva. This, I know I call it couve here, but it's actually vulva. And the vulva has all the things we talked about. A vulva has the capacity for urination, reproduction, and sexual pleasure. And if we talked about the vulva in that way, and, and girls, boys, everybody knew, however you identify, we all knew that all these separate places and had the capacity to do these different things, it would be, I think, a more equitable world for what we all have, what we all can do, what we all expect our bodies to be able to do. It would be very clear. So Kuva is where I want to talk about. Now, let's bring it back to the book. This is my, my middle school lesson. And uh, yeah, so, so one of my friends hired me to talk to a bunch of uh, middle school girls one time about some stuff because they, she didn't feel like the school was doing a, the kind of job that she was comfortable with. So we had a little class outside of school and she said, don't forget to talk about, um, you know, tampons and stuff. And I was like, yeah, got it. You know, I'll talk about all, all three holes. And she was like, all, all three holes. And I said, yeah, she's like, um, but I only have two holes. And I was like, what? no, I know she didn't. Know this. And she had three kids. So this was just mildly alarming to me, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna talk about this anytime, anywhere I possibly can. So, I want to talk about plant-based now and how be eating, how plants powerfully support women in this anatomy. We have a discussion about breasts in the book. Please read it. And a great, we, re, we refer to the research and of many people, but namely Dr. Christy Funk. Um, breasts, the owner's manual. Wade will have you fly in her book here. We love Christy Funk. Her, her discussion, her research, her voice in this She's book amazing. is amazing. Um, 
But let's start uh, now below the belt. And we're going to start from the back here. <clears throat> Anus, the A. How po plants powerfully support Actually, women and men, anybody, however you identify, non-binary, the whole, everybody has an anus. So how plants powerfully support us here is that this is uh, kind of attached to our rectum and our colon and our bowels. On a plant-based diet, you are so filled with fiber that pooping is no problem, right? Otherwise known as constipation is not an issue oh. because pooping is no problem. Hashtag, <laughs> or hashtag pooping is no problem. Um, so, yes, constipation is not an issue. And bazillion people suffer from constipation. And they feel awful. They feel bloated. They feel, it's just, it's just their, their whole mind sinks right down to here because you need to poop. Um, not an issue in our neck of the woods because we're so full of fiber. Fiber just makes it a big slippery slope. Um, and that being said, you don't have an issue of diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is... Uh, something that happens in our colon when we don't eat enough fiber and we have to push hard in order to get stool poop out. And what happens when you're pushing so hard, push, 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 it's like pushing on a balloon, it just out pouches. People think it comes from eating seeds and corn and stuff. Not at all. It comes from lack of eating too much, seeds not enough and corn. So, so, <laughs> seeds and corn, because you need that intense fiber to get everything growing, going through. So, Lack of constipation, diverticulitis is not an issue. And along with that, sometimes people get hemorrhoids, which literally is pushing of the veins, not outpouching and, and all this stuff going on in the colon, um, but actually the veins sort of dropping down like a bunch of grapes right outside the anus itself. So let's avoid all that stuff. High fiber diet, and you will feel so great in that score. I have a friend who said, if my anus is happy, I'm happy because it's so uncomfortable. And that's the truth. I think they used to call it piles back in the day. People would get piles after traveling too long. Um, okay, so let's move to the vaginal space, the V. The vagina, again, only benefits from a whole food plant-based diet. The vaginal space itself is, um, it's amazing how it behaves. It's, 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 it's a lobby, actually, what it is. The vaginal space is a lobby. Um, I'm actually going to jump back to sex ed for a minute here. I often say, like, this is just a space. This is like a, um, just a tube, a channel, a canal, and like a lobby. And the seventh grade boys go, hmm, I'll be a bellhop. I'll meet you in the lobby. And they love that. But anyway, um, the reason I've mentioned that is that people often talk about, you know, comparing penises to vaginas. And I just say some people don't even know where their vagina is. Some girls have, don't even know where it is and they suddenly get their period and they're at you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old and they have to then locate it and deal with it. It's this quiet, dormant space that does nothing for them. Nothing. Until they're that age. Whereas a penis, which vaginas are often compared to, does plenty before this person is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. They know where it is, they know how it functions, they know what to expect from it, they handle it numerous times a day. Whereas the vagina, you know, not at all, crickets. So back to the vaginal space. This um, benefits so much from the, the blood flow that is wonderful with the capillaries that surround the vaginal space, which I'll get to when we talk about this. Um, so the vaginal health is totally supported by plants and good blood flow. Um, above the vagina, we have the cervix and the uterus and the, and the endometrial lining of the uterus and the ovaries. They all benefit from amazing plant-based eating, the lack of, of all sorts of, actually, I'm not gonna talk about the lack of, okay. They all benefit from plant-based eating, the endometrial lining especially. We talk about um, this in our book. We have a personal story of someone named Jordy, and she had growing in her endometria, endometrium lining inside her uterus, fibroids, which I talk about them as being like stalactites in a cave, like they, they just, they hang down and they drip blood. So oftentimes females will be getting anemic because they're losing blood. And sometimes the solution has been like, oh, we'll give you a hysterectomy. So here's this person, our, our person who very generously gave us her story. She was very young in her twenties and she was about to get married and she was also about to have a hysterectomy which is a horrifying choice to have to face. But oddly, her dad had heart disease, so they were on a plant-based diet, and she started eating with them. And instead of having to get a hysterectomy, she got 
a baby. Pregnant and a baby. <laughs> so I want them to call their kid fib for fibroid. <laughs> and the fib of you have to have a hysterectomy when you actually can just try getting off dairy and beet. So it's beautiful how it supports women in that way. So the uh, uterine health, endometrial health, um, uh, ovarian health, gosh, like having healthy ovaries that just produce their own estrogen. They're making your hormones and your body to make your own hormones. You're not having, you know, chicken estrogen and cow estrogen or whatever other animals you could be eating. It's you're running on your own hormones. Um, and I'm going to jump now to the urethra. The urethra is obviously where we pee from, where we urinate from, and above that we have the ureters and the kidneys, or the bladder and the ureters and the kidneys, and the kidneys love to not be overburdened by protein. In a plant-based diet, you're not going to get an excess of protein. Just you're just going to get plant protein. You're just going to get the good. Hey, let's see it, mommy. See your muscle. You're just going to get the good, healthy protein you need. And <laughs> <laughs> um, not that protein means muscles at all. I didn't even really mean it like that. But the point is, you're going to protein over, too much protein burdens your kidneys. Ask any doctor or healthcare worker out there. So the kidneys are going to be healthy and your bladder is going to be healthy because you're not going to be exposed to hopefully as many UTIs or bacteria that can give you UT, you know, your you're tract you're on eye track infections. Infection. And Dr. Uh, Michael Greger discusses in his book, How to Not Die, you can flash it up here, Wade, for us. He has a great section about how UTIs seem to be uh, really linked to the the bacteria in chicken, chicken. That seems to be resistant, like it's this reservoir of, of, of antibiotic resistant bacteria that lives in chicken. And you can't, even if you, you know, cook. you make the chicken, cook it, wash your cutting boards, you know, wash your oven, wash everything, wash your refrigerator, that bacteria still lives on those surfaces. So if you're, if you get it going in your body yourself, it's hard to get rid of. And if you have a partner with whom you're, you know, you're intimate, who knows what's being passed back and forth there. Oh, that's, that's careful. right. Careful with the A. <laughs> and okay, moving on to the C here in front. This, the C, the head of the train here is the clitoris, the clitoris, the clit. This, um, the tissue of the clit clitoris is the exact same tissue of the head of the penis, which is called the glans, the G-L-A-N-S. And that tissue is responsive to, um, to contact, to touch, and it's, it's very sensitive and it engorges with blood by having enough endothelial tissue in there that releases nitric oxide. All the stuff we talk about in heart disease gets going down here. So this triggers this engorgement a little bit, a little bit externally in her body, but women and men are made of the same tissue biologically from the start. So for example, men have nipples, okay? We all have the same Legos and bits and pieces. So let's get back down here. The head of the penis is the same as a, a tissue as a, as a clitoris, the head of the clit. Um, this was the, all new stuff to me. The really. shaft of the penis. Really? The, the tissue in the shaft of the penis, which is called the corpus cavernosa, lives in female bodies up along the vaginal floor. So the more she's stimulated, the more blood flow starts to engorge that same tissue in her body, in her pelvic floor. And this tissue, it's called the crura, or the, these uh, vest, uh, bulbar vestibule. Um, I'm saying it wrong. It, it's in the book. I'm forgetting all these terms right now. And what they do is they engorge with blood and they come here and they wrap around the vaginal space like a hippie hugging a tree. And the blood um, wrapping on this tree, again, because she's, she's aroused, wrapping on the tree creates lubrication. It's, the, it's a combination of the plasma from the blood and some lady chemicals that haven't, all this has come from the endothelial, healthy endothelial. Which comes from eating uh, plants. Yes, and healthy blood flow makes lubrication. So a male sign for readiness is erection. A female sign for readiness is lubrication. So Kuva, Kuva, Kuva. This is what's going on down below for her. Clitoris, urethra, vagina, anus. And if we know about this, we can take care of this. I was talking about this at one of our events and a woman, she stood up and she just said, actually she didn't, she didn't stand up. She spoke up and she said, we don't need to put up with this. And I thought, oh gosh, she's been offended. She said, no, we don't need to put up with any of this stuff that we've put up for so long. We have put up with not having pleasure. We've put up with not taking care of ourselves and you know, our, in our urethra, you know, leaky here and there, and we need to just strengthen ourselves and down below, we haven't taken care of ourselves you know, here and here and here. We need to do so. We need to talk about it, we need to mention it, we need to 
understand it. And I just feel like starting with a whole food plant-based diet is a beautiful way to take care, nurture, and literally support ourselves from top to bottom, front to back, undercarriage on up. And to do so, we even have Kuva t-shirts. We'll be right back. Yay for Jane. We'll be right back and show you the t-shirts. We are back, not only with our Kuva shirts, but now I have my proper props. If you're still watching our video, this is the best way to try to remember it. Anus, the dump truck, because you know, if you yes. can, that's a dump. Ha, ha, ha. And the vaginal space, this red, big red tube. Again, it's too big, but we're just gonna put that right there. Reproductive stuff right there. Urethra, water bottle, put it right there. The best way to remember the clitoris, the clitoris in the front, is with this disco ball for obvious reasons. Okay, so if you are interested in educating people about it, I find this is a wonderful way to be able to talk about terms and verbs and words that everybody should be able to discuss and without, without feeling embarrassed. And to talk about the power of plants and eating a plant-based diet and how it helps support us below. So wear your Kuva t-shirt sprout. We live in Cleveland and I think people think it's the Cleveland Cleveland's United Vegetarian Vegan Association. It's not. It's clitoris, urethra, vagina, anus. All right. Enough of this, but Kuva, Kuva, Kuva. Talk to you soon.